Hello, welcome to this lesson on equilibrium, the question of the day. If there are 30 people on a bus, five of them get off, but five new people get on, how many people are on the bus? The only question is an example of equilibrium. The identity of the people on the bus changed, but the number of people on the bus stayed the same. And that's kind of like equilibrium. So equilibrium really is just a constant rearrangement with the end result being the same as it was. <laughs> so um, this is also kind of like the people who think that they're cleaning when they just organize all of their junk into different piles. I am one of those people, this desk that I'm sitting at, I'll have a pile of junk over here and then I reorganize it and then I have a pile of junk over here. Kind of the same thing. The desk is still messy. That is equilibrium. So the technical definition of chemical equilibrium is a dynamic system, meaning it's always changing, where the concentration, the amounts of the reactants and products are going to remain constant over time. The number of people on the bus is always the same. And it's going to be indicated by a double-sided arrow. Sometimes it's a left arrow and a right arrow together, like stacked on top of each other, or it could be the double-sided arrow. Those are the same thing. So everything is changing, but also everything is staying the same. So at the same time, reactants are going to break apart and become products, and then products are going to break apart and become reactants. And in order to do this, the rate at which one breaks, the reactants break to form the products and the products break to form the reactants, those rates have to be equal to each other in order for this to be an equilibrium. So we say that the rate of the forward reaction from left to right is equal to the reverse reaction from right to left. So the forward reaction is reactants becoming products. The reverse reaction is the products becoming reactants. Here we have maybe the world's most famous chemical equation, and that is the Haber process. That is um, the synthesis of ammonia, NH3, from its elements, nitrogen and hydrogen. Um, in this case, I have the decomposition of ammonia into its elements, but typically it's the other way. That is actually an equilibrium reaction, and we'll learn later about how we manipulate this reaction to kind of give us more of this ammonia than um, the elements. So we can have an equilibrium in a chemical reaction, but we can also have equilibrium during a phase change, and we call that phase equilibrium. Phase equilibrium is when a substance is at a temperature and pressure where it can change phase, and those two phases are going to exist in equilibrium during that change. So at the same time that ice is melting and becoming water, water is freezing and becoming ice, and that is going to result in them being in equilibrium. The third and final type of equilibrium is called solution equilibrium, and that is where we have a saturated solution. The solution must be saturated. And we'll have some excess solute sitting on the bottom of the container, the beaker. And some particles from the solution are going to undissolve or precipitate and sink to the bottom of the container. And in that exact moment, a particle from the bottom will dissolve and become part of the solution. Now, we can actually watch this happen with something called a tracer. So I will teach later in the course about tracers. Really, it's just like a radio radioactive particle, and it's kind of like an x-ray where like an x-ray can light up your bones inside your body, and the doctor can like read if your bones are healthy or if you're fractured or broken or something. Um, we can kind of do that same type of thing with a tracer. So we put in a tiny little radioactive particle, and we can take pictures of it, kind of like x-rays, and watch it. So we have actually seen this happen where the tracer is going to like glow in our beaker, so we'll have a picture of it in the solid sitting on the bottom. And then a few days later, it might be part of the solution. And we've actually watched this happen. So we know for a fact that this happens. <laughs> um, to your eyeballs, your naked eye, you would not be able to tell that different particles are swapping places because it's the same particles. So if it's, um, I don't know, let's just say it's sodium chloride. If it is sodium chloride... <laughs> The same amount of sodium chloride is going to sit on the bottom of the container. If your solution is oversaturated to the point that you have five grams of stuff sitting on the bottom, 
you will always have, so long as the temperature doesn't change, you'll always have five grams of stuff sitting on the bottom. It's just the individual particles are going to exchange places. And because it's chemistry and we can't see it, we need tracers in order to tell us, hey, yeah, that's actually happening. Typically in the notes that go along with these presentations, I have questions at the end to make sure that you know what you're doing. Um, so this graph is not actually part of the teaching lesson, but actually part of the, the learning part. Um, but I want you to see what a graph of equilibrium looks like. So in this case, I don't even remember what this reaction is, but we have a one molar concentration of the reactants on the blue line and zero for the products. And what happens is over time, our reactants are going to become products. The products also are going to slowly become reactants. But when these lines equal out and the concentrations are constant, this one is about 0.73 and this one I think is 0.27 totaling one molar in total. Um, this flat area is where we hit equilibrium. So that is because the concentrations are constant. And that means that the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Right here, the forward reaction is faster because we have a heck of a lot of reactants and not a lot of products. And as this goes on, the um, forward reaction is going to slow down. The Reverse reaction is going to speed up until they are equal. And when that happens, our concentrations are going to hold constant. So this is what the graph of an equilibrium reaction would look like. That is all I have for you on equilibrium. Please make sure to leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And I'll see you there. Bye.